Now, turning to the U.S., you know, we had that, we, as we said last week, and when you're just looking at the chart, that we saw that huge drop off. We said that that was wrong. You know, we shouldn't have had a drop off like that. And now we had that big spike. Again, it, it's just essentially offsetting what, what happened on that huge drop down. Now we, we think it'll average out. When you look at that 20, um, that four week rolling average, you can see we're just below where we were. In 2018, 2017, we expect to see that, again, curl back down. We'll get one more nice little move up, and then you'll get that drop off. But you can see that typically we get some of this movement higher. A lot of that is done by uh, diesel, which will remain elevated on the DISTI side. But gasoline, we expect to see that drop back off, which, you know, we <laughs> last week we saw this huge uh, spike up but we didn't get that response in gasoline. Now we're starting to see that adjust where the gasoline demand numbers went down, but the, the supply numbers went up. So we'll see that reverse and we'll see some of that movement move back down. And again, coming closer to where we were on the 2019 level. So nothing too crazy. The current uh, demand uh, was 16.254 million versus last week uh, when last week was 14.27 but the average was 15.348 million. So again, we're still very much right around that normal level of that 15, uh, 15.3. One of the things that we, we continue to see play out is a movement much closer to 15.1. We will get a drop in, in jet fuel demand. We will get a drop in gasoline. Distillate had a huge makeup number. That'll come back down. We don't expect a huge drop in the distillate side, but it's the gasoline and jet that we see some of that more, uh, some more normalization, if you will, coming and being a bit calmer into uh, pro heading into the Christmas month, uh, the Christmas week. So then when we look at distillate, distillate had an increase, uh, a decrease or a draw of 2.85 million. That's 12.4 million below the five-year average. And, and most of that still remains in pad one. Pad one had a drop of 1.4 million. That brings us 8.9 million below the five-year average with only pad three uh, had a drop of 80,000, which is 2.4 million below the five-year average. On the import side, as we've been saying, they're going to stay high. They're going to stay elevated. Uh, they, they had an increase of 181,000 barrels a day. That's taking us uh, 166,000 a, uh, a day above the five-year average. And all of that was driven by pad one, with pad one having an increase of 211,000 barrels a day. Again, 173,000 above the five-year average. When you look at the, the chart, and again, trying to streamline things a bit when we're looking at the 29-year average, you can see that we typically have this, this slight decline. Obviously, it's slight, you know, so the, the pace here is, is accelerating, but we typically have some steady draws up until we get into, you know, essentially the end of the year. So, we, when you average it out, we do expect to see an increase, but and then that'll average it's where it'll look very similar to what that 29 year average looks like on that fairly steady decline. And then we'll get some of those increases as we go into year end. And then, uh, the, and, and it's really going to be timed with what is what are the refiners going to do? How active are the refiners? And because imports are going to remain elevated, especially into pad one, we expect to see some of this distillate um, builds still be small and then just, again, average out over the last four weeks, still see some steadiness. But again, it's just going to be a, a slow grind higher. We'll still be in a bullish position. Distillate is still the more bullish out of all of the products, just given where the demand is for heating, where the demand is for, for the road, and that will keep things elevated. Yo, know, as we said last week, we had those, we had these two huge drops. You know, we were expecting a drop to just uh, to above the five-year average. Instead, we had a drop well below the five-year average, and we were expecting a, a pop. Uh, and there was going to be a makeup number taking us back above the five-year, uh, closer to about four point three, four point four million. Instead, we blew through that to 4.896. You know, that, so again, this is a, a huge makeup number. We expect this to come back down to that five-year average and, and really settle in at about 4.3, 4.4 million because there was a, a swing, uh, an elevated swing to the upside, and you can see it's happened before. It's not like it's crazy. It, it just be, it will have that, you know, we don't think there's going to be a huge makeup number to the downside, but more something along the lines of 4.2, 4.3 million. 
So then when we look at trucking, uh, the trucking numbers uh, fairly tight at about 124, uh, the market demand index of 124. Uh, so you're seeing things level level out for the most part. Uh, here you can see that pricing, again, your diesel prices are, are, are stabilizing. They're coming down about two cents at a, uh, a clip so far per week. But again, wages need to go up. We're starting to see wages uh, go go up in general. So we're starting to see some of this start to uh, to, to bounce a bit. So again, you're starting to see some, uh, again, we expect the market demand index to, to climb a bit higher to about 135, but still, again, remain elevated, especially when you go back through historics. We're still at record levels uh, when you zoom out, but obviously down for 2021. And we do see some of that reaccelerating into year end. Uh, rail traffic slowed down. Uh, it was total car loads versus 2020 was was only up 0.3 percent. Uh, the drop was grains. Again, that's a lot of timing. Uh, metallic and ores that re remain the case. Obviously, motor vehicles and parts remains a huge issue. Uh, petroleum and petroleum products, you know, grinding a bit higher. We expect that to to get a, a bit better, especially as Pad Three looks to get rid of and move some of that product out of their state uh, to avoid those taxes. And again, intermodal had a bigger drop and was 10.9% below 2020. We, we see that bouncing a little bit, but again, we haven't been able to break uh, that negative 8% to negative 11%, and we, we just expect to be in that range. Uh, on the coal side, that's going to remain strong, obviously, due to uh, the, the shortages. You know, the one that we do expect to see some of that bounce is going to be in grains and metallic ores, but nothing crazy. And it's just grains was so crazy in 2020 that it just makes it a tough comp. So the numbers are still good. It's just, it's a very tough comp year. And um, and the same can be said for intermodal, which is why we have to under, uh, you'll factor that in a bit. And we'll talk about it more tomorrow on the uh, econ show. Then when we look at the signal uh, and and some of the uh, the, the levels of store of um, ships, here you can see the import volumes still remain elevated. We're still well above uh, previous year, previous week, previous year. Uh, and then obviously things slow down going into Christmas, and then they reaccelerate as you as we look out. Some of these ships have been asked to stay further offshore uh, and and just stay uh, slightly. You know, some of them are staying in motion. So again, you're even though the numbers look a little bit better when you're looking at stationary, it's still a huge decline. Uh, there's still a huge build, especially when we look further offshore and um, and the amount of cargoes that are waiting to on unload. And then obviously the the uh, the problems are persist are persisting as well when you look at the supply chain disruptions specifically coming out of uh, China. So now when we look at the six day temperature outlook, you can see uh, things here, they were fairly normal. Uh, some of the New England going into uh, Christmas gets a little bit below normal, but you're, you're still seeing some above normal activity, especially in the, uh, the mid Atlantic, uh, near normal within the, uh, uh, the tri-state area. So again, you, we don't expect too much increase in heating oil demand and natural gas demand, for, but obviously it'll be a little bit more going into the, uh, just based on where the North is and how, when we look at the West Coast, things are a bit cooler, but obviously much warmer throughout large parts of the country. So net, net in terms of uh, demand for natural gas and heating oil, we expect it to be fairly flat. So again, nothing too crazy versus the seasonal average. Now, when we look at gasoline, gasoline had a small draw of 720,000 barrels. That brings us 14.2 million below the five-year average uh, with the only build, uh, the builds being in pad two at 1.42 and pad five of 240,000. So when we look at where things are, uh, there's, you know, pad two, pad three, it's fairly steady in terms of where some of the declines have been. Uh, imports dropped, as we said they would last week, uh, where they fell 69, uh, 59,000 barrels a day, which is 69,000 below the five-year average. We expect to see a small increase in that. As we said in segment one, uh, we, we fell to a nine-week low for imports, and we do expect to see a little bit of a bounce. But again, still right around this 450 to 550 level. So nothing too crazy. Uh, when you look at the the storage levels uh, and, and looking at this chart over the last 29 years, you can see there's typically a level off. And that's what we've been trying to say. Like the, 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 the pause here is very seasonal. We're not seeing anything unseasonal in some of these shifts. And then we expect to see this reaccelerate, <coughs> excuse me, and close out the year a bit higher. So again, nothing too crazy to, uh, to, to, uh, to talk about there. 
Now, when we look at gasoline production, gasoline production had a big spike of 438,000 barrels a day, which is a yield of about 3.2% uh, increase, which is 1.9% above the five-year average. On the distillate side, when we look at Disti here, you can see that there was, uh, there was a small drop of about 105,000 barrels a day, which is 44 basis points. Uh, it's just below the five-year average. So we do expect to see distillate increase, as, and then we'll see some of that uh, drop on the gasoline side. So we'll see some of these shifts, you know, like when we look at Europe oil products, as we've been talking about, exports to the Americas came in low, and we expect to see some of that increase as builds in Europe uh, have accelerated, especially on the gasoline side. Now, if you remember last week, we had that big spike in demand, and now we had that uh, a, a bigger drop off. So according to Gas Buddy data, weekly U.S. gasoline demand fell 3.5% from the prior, prior week and was 1.9% below the four-week average. And it was the lowest week of demand since the week of October 24th. So again, we, the, we had that big spike in demand. We didn't get it on the EIA data. Now we get the drop, and now we get that response in terms of that demand. So we will see that come back down. This is more of a leading indicator in terms of where that's going to go. According to Gas Buddy data, Monday, uh, U.S. gasoline demand was up 1.3% from the prior Monday, but was down 2.3% from the average of the last four so we expect to see things get a bit better than this this week because th uh, this week that is being shown here is down. You know, we had that drop. But when you look at it over the last four weeks, we think some of those numbers are going to start to normalize and normalize right around just above where this past week was. And, and again, that's going to pull down those EIA numbers just because there's a bit of a lag between Gas Buddy and the EIA. So still going to be uh, positive, but it's just going to be some uh, balancing act in terms of where some of these flows are. Now, when we look forward and look at the uh, you know people who are indicating they're going to travel, so there's just over 100 million people that are saying that they're going to be taking the roads this year. You can see we're still below 2019, but much closer than where we have been. And this is just looking at the number of people that are going to be going by road, by air, and other so you can see that we're still missing by air and by road, <clears throat> but we are really closing that gap and getting much closer. So realistically, by 2022, we're going to be right in line. Uh, who knows how people getting sick, testing positive, if that keeps them from traveling, doesn't keep them from traveling. Who knows? I know a lot of people have been coming up positive recently. So hopefully everyone's getting it out of their system or into their system prior to uh, seeing family and, uh, and enjoying the holidays. Now, when we look at gasoline prices here, there, there was another drop of 2.6 cents. So we went from $3.34 to $3.31. Uh, as we were saying, we expect to, to kind of level off at about $3.26, $3.27. So we do expect to see some more uh, drop. Uh, on the diesel side, we dropped 2.5 cents, uh, went from $3.67 $3 to $3.65. We expect that to, to flatline closer to about 360, but again, this will come down, but still remain very elevated and keep the price of shipping um, you know, uh, high. Now, now, when we look at blending components, here you can see that there was that little pause, as we've seen in previous years, looking at 2018, looking at, uh, at 2016. A little bit of a pause. We expect that to reaccelerate higher. Uh, when you look at blending components, there was a drop of 730,000 barrels uh, uh, in storage, and that's 7 million below the five-year average. We expect that to, again, just close that gap as you get that pause and then the reacceleration into year end. Now, when we look at, uh, at gasoline, uh, get the gasoline side here, you can see that we push right to the highs, but we had that big drop. Then we had this little bit of a pause. We were expecting it to continue to climb back up before we have a, a bigger drop. Instead, there was that big makeup number that should have happened last week. Now, uh, you know, because as we were saying, last week should have been a nice, uh, a bigger pop up. So now we'll see this drop back down, come closer to, again, split the difference. We're not going to come back to the lows, but we expect it to be above this 15-year average. But again, just right in line, uh, right in the middle of that, uh, of that cloud. So now when we look at some of these movements here, you can see we're just above the, those highs. And just looking historically, there's typically this spike up 
It can vary as to when it happens. This one happened a little bit earlier. We expect this to drop back down and come back to where it was in 2016. So we get that spike up, and then we expect it to come back to this 2016 level. And in previous years, you, you kind of level a bit, level off, but we've seen, um, again, people just adjusting their spending patterns, adjusting their, their driving patterns, which is going to bring us back to 2016 levels. Still, obviously, above 2020, but just coming back and being below where we were versus 2019. Uh, this is when we're looking at, at why we're saying this. When you look at transit stations, things have come back down. Workplaces are have normalized. But when you look at retail and recreation, had that spike. Now we're, we're not able to get back to where we were. Parks are slowing down. Think it's getting a bit colder out. Residentials increased a touch. So as people look to mitigate exposures ahead of Christmas, we think that this is going to accelerate uh, to decelerate some of the activity, and you're going to see that play out on the uh, on the gasoline and uh, and refined product uh, consumption. Apple mobility trends uh, trended down a bit in Europe. Uh, things are, remain fairly flat in the U.S., and we expect uh, things to move just closer to the baseline, especially when we look at just uh, previous cycles. Uh, when we look at propane, uh, propane had a draw of 2.4 million. That's 8.7 million below the five-year average. And here you can see that things are really starting to um, follow mostly where we were in 2018 and, uh, and, and moving along these lines. We, we just expect it to remain at a very tight spot and at the low end of that level. And then when you factor in just the demand in the U.S., the exports, we're still uh, at the a new seasonally adjusted low when we're looking at days of supply on a historical level. And we expect this to track 2018 levels fairly closely as we go through the end of the year. Uh, vaccination uh, rates have picked back up a bit just because as Omicron uh, and people start to test positive, people uh, that were putting it off decide to get it. Uh, some are already starting to get their boosters. So again, we're, we're, we expect this to be fairly stable as we go into the year, uh, into year end. Uh, when we look at jet fuel demand, that, as we were saying, we didn't expect to see this drop below 2020 levels. So we expected to have a makeup number. It just it came in just above where we were in 2018. And we expect it to, again, be between this 1.4 and 1.5 million. Uh, there was a draw of 1.42 million of jet fuel that brings us 3.2 million below the five-year average, and all of that is being caused by Pad 3, where Pad 3 is 3.5 million below the five-year average. So everything else around the uh, country is normal except Pad 3. Uh, so on a demand side, again, we just were uh, expected to be below uh, the normal 2016 to 2019 levels, just given where activity is. On a global uh, backdrop, when you, we look at it, Europe has had a, a fairly sizable uh, decline. Rest of the world has been fairly flat. Uh, so Asia Pacific bounced back a bit, still below the peak prior to some of the lockdowns as, uh, as, as the Americas uh, remain fairly stable. Europe is really the biggest driver of declines. Average number of departures per day decreased by just under 1.2%. Year-on-year -year departures were up by more than uh, 36% at the same airport, so still better than last year, but below where we were in 2019. Departures in Australia and the UK led growth this week, while departures in China and the US declined. When we look at you know normal cancellations since last week have removed on average just 3,000 barrels per day. Uh, in Europe, departures uh, fell by 0.8% equivalent to about 74.5% of 2019 levels. Departures by low-cost carriers uh, have increased despite the new variant. U.S. passenger numbers decreased by 0.6% week on week. Uh, and, and again, just coming in about 400,000 below what is normal. Asia-Pacific departures in China reversed last week's gains, declining by 190 uh, on average each, each day, week on week, with Australia and uh, Malaysia seeing some of these increases. So again, just a fairly mixed bag, which we uh, expect to, to remain the case into uh, year end. TSA passengers, as we've been saying, you know, just fairly flattish. We don't, we don't really see getting too much above that 2 million mark uh, until we get into, obviously, Christmas and New Year's when people look to travel. But we expect to be between this about 1.5 and 1.8 million uh, through year end. Uh, then when we look at, uh, obviously, except for the spike for, for holidays, but we do think that that will be below uh, what was is normal in 2019. Open table, the regional breakdown, uh, things have slowed down a bit. 
So we expect things to remain a bit uh, of a headwind, especially when you look at some of the restrictions that have been rolled out in the U.S. as well as in Europe. So Germany, Ireland, U.K., U.S., we expect that to remain depressed. And instead of it being, uh, you know, let's let's say 10 percent b- below normal on weekdays, we expect it to be about 15 percent. And then on weekends, we expect it to instead of it being flat to slightly up. You know, let's just say averaging down about 5% uh, versus normal. So again, these are some of the things that we're, we've been seeing. And now in the next segment, we're going to look at what's happening internationally, how are some of the U.S. exports uh, impacted, and what does that mean for uh, floating and, um, and, and cargoes in motion around the world.